Good. So, I told you that you have 50 grams of calcium carbonate and 18,9 grams of the sulfuric acid. No, yeah, sulf yeah, sulfuric acid. And then I ask you for the mass of the carbon dioxide that will form. Okay, now, omdat ons niet weet wat er een van ons twee reagens is, die beperkende reagens niet, is dit die eerste ding wat ik moet doen. Oftentimes they will tell you which one is the limiting reactant. Then you don't need to do this part. But we don't know. We know we have 50 grams of the one and 18,9 grams of the other one. But we don't know which one will be used up first. Okay. Goed, so I gaan eerst gaan en al twee van hulle gaan omzet naar mol toe. En dit is tot ons vrijdag gekom het. So I took the 50 grams of calcium carbonate that I had and said, okay, then that's 0,5 moles of calcium carbonate. En dan ik je 18,9 gram van die salpetersier gevat en gaan omzet naar mol toe. En toen zei ik, dit is 0,3 mol salpetersier. Remember, both of these are the reactants. Nee? Ons is nog niet bezig met die producten nie. Ons wil net kyk wat er een van die twee gaan eerste opgebruik word. Is everyone still following? Allemaal recht tot dan. Goed. Dan, volgende stap, is jy sê nou, ons weet dat wanneer die calcium carbonaat reageer met die HNO3, doen hy dit in een verhouding van 1 tot 2. Ok, en nou grade 10, here you have to decide how you are going to move forward. I'm going to show you what I always do, and I'm going to explain to you how I do that. But you can work it from the other way around as well. Okay, so I just pick one of them. Let's say I pick the 0 0,5 moles of calcium carbonate. Stimulus on my gate, 0 0,5 mole calcium carbonate. Do you agree? If I had 0 0,5 mole of calcium carbonate reacting completely, how few mole van your in with 3 would then react here? Who crowns in? You just multiply it with two, okay? So for this to be used up fully, I would need one mole of that. It's almost sure that by the two getalen uitgekomen. And now what you do is, okay, so we need one mole to use up the 0 0,5 mole of the calcium carbonate. But I only have 0 0,3 mole available. So that's less than what I need. Do you agree? Of the HNO3. I'm going to do it the other way around now as well. Okay. So, stimulus sum, I get not enough of the HNO3 to om deel te neem aan hierdie reaksie nie. Met ander woorde, we're going to run out of that. Because for the, all of the calcium carbonate to react completely, I would have needed one mole of the HNO3. Do I have one mole? No, I have way less than one mole. I only have 0 0,3 mole. In other words, we're going to run out of that, so that must be the limiting reactant. Kijk weer mooi. Ek sê nou, as ek 0,5 daar gaan inset, ek wil daar 0,5 jyltemal kan opgebruik, dan beteken dit, om dit jyltemal op te gebruik, moet ek 1 mol van die HNO3 hee. Het ek 1 mol daarvan? No, I only have 0 0,3 mole. So that is the one that we don't have enough of. In other words, that is the limiting reactant. Okay, hou om net hier aan hierdie kant op ijs. Want ek wil vir julle wees, jy kan het anders om ook doen. Let's say you go and put in the 0 0,3 moles there. Die ander ene. Okay? Dit moest twee as a begin mole uitgewerkt. So nou gaan sit ek daar ene in. Hoeveel mole van die calcium carbonate het jy dan nodig? To react with it completely. Hoeveel? 0, 1,5. Hi. Hoe kom ons daarbij uit? Want sien jylle, dan zijn nog steeds in een verhouding van 1 tot 2. You guys see, then it's still in a relationship of 1 to 2. Okay, and now you say, when we're looking at the calcium carbonate, do you guys agree that I only need 0, 0,15 and I have a lot more than that? How much more do I have? I have 0, 0,5. Stimulus on. Met ander woorde, dit wat ek het, is baie meer as dit wat ek nodig het. So hy gaan in oormaat wees. And if this one is in excess, then obviously the other one has to be limiting. 
So jy kan om enige kant om uitwerk, as jy weet wat die beperkende reagens is, grijp, dan weet jy. Maar as jy weet wat die reagens in oormaat is, dan weet jy mos per definitie ook wat die een is wat beperkend is. So if you calculate and you find the limiting reactant, then you're good to go. We're going to use the limiting reactant from here on out. Good, you have the limiting reactant. But if you find the reactant in excess, you've also found the limiting reactant. Stem jylle saam? Want jy krij die een wat in oormaat is, en die ander een is die beperkende reagens. So, anders kool. So as ons hierdie doen, en jy sien, ok, die kalsiumkarbonaat is in oormaat, dan beteken dit, waarmee gaan ons van die af verder werk, met die HNO3. So it doesn't matter which one you do. You don't have to do both. Please don't do both. Okay. There's another way to do this. Some people prefer working with fractions, but then it just gets complicated. So for me, the easiest thing to do is to say, okay, let's pick one of the two that we calculated and put that one in. And then say, what would I need of the other one? And check, do I have more than that or do I have less than that? If I have more than that, then this one is the reactant in excess. If I have less than that, then that one is the limiting reactant. Okay, good. But I haven't completed my question yet because from here we have to say which one, or we actually have to work out the mass of the calcium, the carbon dioxide that will form. So om dit te doen, gaan jy altyd sê, jou beperk in die reagens tot die een wat jy wil uitwerk. And that's the one we want to calculate. Okay. Goed. Wat is die verhouding van die HNO3 tot koolstofdioxid? Vir dit gaan kyk ek die boe. Twee tot een. Goed. How much more of the HNO3 do I have available? Kijk, hij is een pers. Why am I working with the HNO3? Because that is the one that's the limiting reactant. Okay. Met andere woorden, hoeveel van die koolstofdioxide gaan voor hem? You can do the x and then the cross multiplication or you can just say I just divided by 2. Nee, want dan hou hy moos die verhouding van 2 tot 1 daar. Maar onthoud dus aantal mol koolstofdioxid. En heel aan die begin het ek vir julle gevra vir massa. How can I convert mass mol to mass? Dit moos hierdie ene. Okay. 